the anther cone of about a quarter of an inch. I don't know what that is in centimeters. Now that that usually an indication that that would be most likely cross pollinized to other varieties because the stigma is exposed. The flower is wide open. It's attracting the bee. The pollen may or may <coughs> not be shed. I'm going to check it out here. This is the way I like to emasculate the flower in one motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Now, I, I, I get pretty good at this. Now I'm going to check it on my thumbnail. Believe it or not, I do this a lot. You can have this one too. Then. Yes, yeah, started shed pollen. Had it not shed pollen, it it might be. Had it not shed pollen, it'd be most likely to be crossed by now. Because look here, this one doesn't have any pollen shedding, and it's already exerted. And here's this immature flower. This is the stage I'd have to use this as a female. The reason for that is that I know the stigma is not exerted yet. So when flowers that exert out there early, I have to go to this stage to be able to emasculate it. Notice how that anthracone is stuck around the edge of the flower. That one I could safely cross the two I couldn't because the stigma was exerted out of the anthracone. This one was just immature enough that the stigma is a little bit immature, not really totally receptive to pollen, but because the stickiness is already on there, the, the pollen will stick on there and those, those uh, pollen uh, grains will germinate and grow a tube down the uh, style into the ovary. I knew I just couldn't use those two, so I had to get rid of those. And as everybody sees the difference here in these two flowers, where I emasculated, mm -hmm. and you see the stigma exerted above the anthracone. Mm -hmm. That's a real problem for cross-pollination. The other problem, if I can find one, anybody want to look at these any closer? I'm going to try to find a flower here. If you don't mind, I'm going to pull this off. It's too late to mind. <laughs> okay. Saving seed from uh, the tomato on the placement. There must be chickens around here or something, pigeons or something. Sparrows. <laughs> anyway. Uh, this fruit here has on the sepals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's better for seed extraction for true seed if it only has one, two, three, four, five. The reason for that is that those that have more sepals are more complicated, more doubled, and more apt for the flower scar to be a flattened or broadened style, and the stigma may be broader, thus uh, creating cancer for cross pollination. So, saving the seed, you should have the smallest flower scar possible. That means that it's most likely to be self pollinized. That's a tiny flower scar. This one's a little larger. This one has this one has virtually no chance of being cross pollinized. This one is, is increasing from five to ten percent chance of cross pollination. And the bigger the fruit is, and the more fasciated the fruit is, the more doubled it is, or the flower being more doubled, the chances of cross pollination is extremely high. So try not to save seed from the first fruit that ever developed, because the first the first cluster usually has a flower that's very complicated. Don't save that one. In fact, if you're trying to save seed and you got these plants growing, take off those biggest fruit and allow just the more perfect fruit to develop. That way you'll have pure seed. Hmm. So I'm going to see if I find another example here. Nope. Yeah. So I, a lot of times I will eliminate the first flower that sets on a truck because it's more apt to be cross-pollinized. Does that make any sense to anybody? Okay, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see a good example of a huge, large fruited type that showed that doubling of the flower, but 
when tomatoes uh, were domesticated. Cross it out from this one, or not cross, but I picked from, from those tomatoes that didn't do it during the years. But you're right, in the beginning there is a bigger chance that they do it. This one uh, had a bigger stem that usually indicates a bigger stem, bigger fruit, more fatiated, more doubled. And a lot of tomatoes, uh, especially as they're domesticated out of Peru or um, Mexico, the single flower nature of small fruited uh, one inch uh, type fruit, uh, the, the mutation that allowed that to, to kind of have a double flower, and a double flower then uh, mutated into being a bigger fruited type that also created more of the ribs on the shoulder of a tomato. So if you're looking at the Mexican variety like Zapotec that has those, those fluted edges, that's an indication of the origin of the larger fruited tomato from a cherry tomato. There's even one tomato that looks like you have pressed cherry tomatoes into a lump. Yeah, and you don't want to save teeth no, when they get all clustered like that. That creates a real problem for teeth saver. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but they, anyway, it's a funny uh, one. The tomato I showed you here with the exerted style, that was the, uh, that was the, uh, the, the old habit of tomato. They were meant to be cross-pollinized. They, 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 they put that, that stigma way out there so the bees would pollinize it. And, uh, um, but it's a, also a danger when you grow tomatoes because if there are no bees or bumblebees or flies that pollinate, you will not get a real tomato. If you have it like this, yeah, that would, they, would only be a minor uh, without yeah. seeds. So th this this is the reflection that they relied on uh, on insect pollinizers. Yes, yes. And and uh, the the varieties we have today, many of them were were in order to get lots of seed, that style had to be restricted and and grow only to the neck of the uh, of the anther cone to be self pollinized because <clears throat> most of the pollen is shed from the inside. And if it was like most flower, see if I can find one here. Once they are ready to pollinize, they become quite pendant, like this. I mean, pendant hanging down. And uh, if that stigma is dirty way out, that pollen is going to fly all over the place. But if that stigma is right where that those anther cone is shedding that pollen, this is your your uh, female part of the flower. If, if it's pendant like this and shaking like this, it'll land all over that stigma. Like this, it might just blow all over the place and not even get on the, on the fruit. So those kind are more subject for the bees to land on and they're rubbing it all over the place with their own <coughs> pollen. If it, it's like this, that bee lands on it and it's not rubbing the pollen on it, it's just shaking the flower and it's being pollinized by itself. Does mm -hmm. that make any sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Most uh, varieties is like, uh, like the second, this. yeah. Yeah, so that- This is rare. But the, the problem with most uh, tomato varieties today, they're, they're, like, they're like this. They got two female parts kind of fused together and the anther cones are spread all over the place like this. And that, uh, that's where you get that cross pollination. So, so if you see a flower that's very doubled and one or more or few uh, stigma and, or more than uh, five anthers, then you got a cross pollination problem. It's okay for big fruit type, but also this is a reflection of what I call inbreeding depression. You, I want to get rid of this because this creates those fatiated fruit with the, with the cap facing on the end of the uh, tomato and the uh, broadened zippering. A lot of times you'll see zippering on tomatoes, and I probably won't see any here. Uh, um, no, I'm not going to find any here. <laughs> Anybody want to find a, a tomato with a, with cap facing or zippering on it? Take a little round. Anyone over here? You need other varieties for that. There's one here. You find one? Oh, really? Where? That one possibly? Okay, that's a good one. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> this this one had had, had one or more uh, female parts attached to it, and if there's one or two of them in there, very close together, the the space between those two will cause some zippering, like a zipper 
Yeah, it would be opening that. And sometimes those can also follow the cat facing all the way around like this, where you have this zippering around here like this, and then the, where the pistol was attached. So those you don't want. Don't save seed from them, and hopefully select plants that produce only uh, tomatoes that still have the pistol attached. To me, this is a perfect example of a, a tomato that is that will aid in having purebred line. The yeah, pistol still, still attached. Still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. That's what you want. That's what you want in tomato. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's just a real quick lesson for me, so I don't know if it means anything to you. Of course, it's always interesting to hear and <laughs> see what I would do. I was a bee in my other life, so I'm just kind of reflecting <laughs> on what I was looking for. Wow. <laughs> okay, that was a quick way to get some refreshment. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go there again?